This takes me to a final inquiry question. You've all been very efficient, which is really good. I would say this dot point is very important. Can anyone tell me why? I can, I can guess that this might be the 20 marker in your, in your paper because what they've done in the past year, two years, is the questions at the very end have always been to do with disease. So they may flip it around. Why is this so high, yield, Maya? Just looking at the dot point. Um, because they're asking you to identify trends, maybe? Yeah, they're asking you to analyze data. So it literally means we are going to give you data and you have to make your own conclusions. And that data is just going to be related to conservation management. It could be related to a disease or disorder, or it could relate to human evolution. It's such a broad dot point. You all agree? You could literally be given any data on any disease and associated genetics, and you just have to understand how to interpret it. I'll give you one question. One question that will suffice in your understanding. Yeah. Question 39. I'm going to give you all about two minutes to very quickly jot down your examples for society and species conservation. That's all this question is testing. Okay. So you should just very quickly be jotting down your points. Now, a little tip. All I'm getting you to do in class with, with all of us is create answer plans. But after the lesson, every single question you create an answer plan for, you should write up a full answer and check it with the marking guidelines I've created for you. That's how these master classes are meant to work. If I let you write an entire six mark answer, it's going to take 12 or more minutes. and It'll be a waste of your learning because you can do it in your own time. OK, so make sure you redo these questions in entirety after class. All right, Mike, we'll start with you. Population genetic studies on society. How would you split society up? Let's say, Mike, you, you, you remember the syllabus really well. What two parts about society do we care about with genetics? Um, what about diseases and human evolution? Very good. And I'll give you a little hint. So many students will miss this one, right? Because it's overlooked. I have never seen a HC bio question in the new syllabus to do with human evolution. So you very well could get it. So yeah. So Mike, take it away. Why do we care about it from a medical point of view? So for diseases, it allows scientists to study patterns of diseases like genetic disease inheritance and improve treatment options available mm, good good but how can we be more specific i want a specific example so let me get uh mary if i had to give you an example mary imagine you have to visualize this seven years down the line you've got into medical school you finished your seven years of study while ishan's a two hundred thousand dollar a year coder you're still in school and you finally graduate and you have to prick the heels of newborn babies on your first shift. Why are you doing this? Checking for any sort of like genetic disease. Good. And you're sending this off to do what? What's going to happen to those blood samples that you sent off for these newborns? Uh, oh. Um, they're sequenced to see if there are any like if there's any genes that are defected or something that could cause like some sort of genetic yeah. disease down the line. Very good. So what you want to say is we PCR and we analyze the PCR samples. So it could be electrophoresis, but nowadays we have more, more complex and newer technologies where you don't have to read horizontal bands on a strip of paper. You just get a positive or negative result, right? So we use PCR and sometimes electrophoresis, more advanced technologies, to look at the risk of children developing genetic conditions. And it happens in 3% of children, 3% of kids. So imagine, you know 100 people. One of those 100 people is going to have a child with some severe genetic condition. Could be you, could be me, right? And the way we pick that up is through conducting a newborn heel prick test. So that's your example. The New South Wales Newborn Screening Program, which checks for about 30 or slightly more genetic conditions. Good. Maya, what's the most common genetic condition? I'll give you a hint. Caucasian baby, uh, can't pass its first stool, lung infections. What are you thinking? Cystic fibrosis. Very good. You'd be surprised. You know more than a few first-year medical students who would not really understand 
when cystic fibrosis is present? And that's very exactly the answer. Good job. Good. All right. Okay, we've looked at medicine. What about human evolution? Monica, back to you. Um, isn't it kind of just to see like how it um, genetic diversity has increased over time? Uh, but you want to think about this, right? Would we really spend billions of dollars to just go, aha, Darwin was probably right. Genetic diversity has increased. Alex, uh -huh. why, why else would you want to look at human evolution? Um, to see where we're evolving and to see if we're losing or gaining any traits. Mm, yeah, that'd be, yeah. And if you had to guess, I'd say we're gaining where, where there's increased variation over time because people, there's less migration barriers. People can fly a plane and have the family in a completely different country, right? So we see crossing of, ge of geographical boundaries. People with diseased alleles are still surviving through good medicine and passing their traits on. Good. But that's not what you're going to be writing. What you're all going to be writing is human evolution. It's our past. That's what we care about specifically. And I'll tell you why we care. Because up until 100,000 years ago, right, and humans have existed for millions of years, up until 100,000 years ago, there were more than six different species of humans. Everyone with me? Six different species walking and inhabiting Earth at the same time. Suddenly, about 50,000 years ago, no one knows what happens because there's no scriptures or there's no writing about this event, but every other species except us got wiped, wiped clean off the face of the Earth. We have no clue what happened. Did we breed with them? Did we wage you know, genocide? And did we destroy all the other homeless, you know, homo species? So we have no clue. So understanding our past can help us understand our present and where we're headed as a species ourselves. Good. So the example I've wanted you to remember is mitochondrial DNA sequencing. Why, why mitochondrial DNA? Why are we being so fancy? Why can't we just look at nuclear DNA? Maya, where does the mitochondria of your cells and my cells come from? Um, isn't it the same as our mother's? Good, right? So when the spermatozoa fertilizes the ova, if I have to very quickly draw it for you, the spermatozoa fertilizes the ova, the ova and its mitochondria become your mitochondria. So all of your cells and their mitochondria is derived from your mother's. Your mother's mitochondria was derived from her mother's. Her mother's mitochondria, so forth, so on. So it follows a maternal inheritance pattern. What's the next interesting feature of mitochondrial uh, DNA? We call it a biological clock. What do clocks do? What's that sound you always hear when you, when uh, film directors are trying to show you that time is ticking? You see a regular tick, tick. It's okay. Yeah, right? The same thing happens with mitochondrial DNA. It mutates at a very constant rate. Constant rate. I'll give you an example. Let's say it mutates so many times. It has a very high mutation rate. But uh, just for an example, let's say that it, we see one mutation in mitochondrial DNA every 1,000 years. And let's say if we look at the Caucasian population, we have 10 mutations. Ishan, how long has a Caucasian population existed for, based off that? You said there's one mutation every 1,000 years, right? Yep, and there's 10 mutations you see in the 10, Caucasian 000. population. 10,000 years. There you go, right? And so we did mitochondrial DNA sequencing, and we found the African population has the greatest variation in mitochondrial DNA, which tells us they must have existed for the longest period of time, which supports which theory? Out of Africa or regional? There's also the whole regional hypothesis or replacement theory. The second one, right? Out of Africa, right? If the African population has the greatest variation in mitochondrial DNA that lived there for the longest, that means all modern day Homo sapiens, which have lived for a shorter period of time, would have diverged or evolved from that common ancestor. Yeah, very good. Good job. So that was the key thing I wanted to stress. Now, for population conservation, just remember SNP analysis, koalas, and the southern koala population has the lowest genetic diversity. Just remember one, everyone. And I highly doubt they're going to ask you this, but I am highly suspicious they're going to give you completely new examples with tables and graphs and you will have to come to your own conclusions about which populations have less diversity, for example. Okay? Good. Mm -hmm.